Today, I'm delighted to introduce you to mosaic artist Joy Parker for my new series, Inside the Studio. Joy Parker is based in Selkirk in Scotland, and she's an eclectic artist who works in a variety of different mediums, but um, mosaic is her main medium. And she works not just two-dimensionally, but also in three dimensions, making her own armatures, She's done church mosaics and made a very significant contribution to the Ruins Project in uh, Pennsylvania, as well as working on some interesting community projects. So um, I hope you enjoy meeting Joy. Hello, Joy. Hello, Hi. Helen. <laughs> Welcome to my first episode of Inside the Studio. So I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you today about your life in your studio and your practice. So okay. first of all, I want to start off by asking you about how you came to Mosaics in the first place. What's okay. your backstory? Well, um, I did a degree in fine art um, as a mature student. Um, and when that finished, um, uh, my husband and I went to Barcelona for a weekend um, to celebrate, not particularly because there were mosaics there, but obviously Gaudi was there. And I loved the combination of his mosaic work with the wrought iron because I had been using wrought iron in my mostly sculptural course I'd been doing. Um, then I came back and I didn't use the mosaic, I did all sorts of other things. Um, but then I had another trip to India and um, went to the Taj Mahal as you do. And um, so I think it's called, I've got a note here so I'd remember, it's called Pietra. Jura, which is another form of mosaic. It was the inlaid marble. Mm, um, and I thought, beautiful. yeah, I thought, well, I can't um, replicate that. I can't afford it. I don't know how to do it. But then it took me back. So, oh, well, Gaudi, uh, maybe I could do something because I wanted to um, depict the beautiful birds of India. I just wanted to get some of the colour. Mm. Um, and hitherto in my mosaic work in particular, um, I hadn't got been able to achieve the kinds of colour that I wanted. So I turned to um, vitreous glass. That was how I began. Oh, okay. And and did you therefore start <laughs> off making birds? I did, but they weren't sculptural. They were two um, D. Um, they were also the sort of the selling side of my exhibition because I had all sorts of other things like brooms and um, piles of shoes and odd things. So I like to create um, an ambience with all sorts of different things for different people to enjoy. But the mosaics, they did sell. <laughs> so I was in Birmingham, so I was that was quite a good quite a good start and they certainly um, created a, a, a colourful, um, I don't want to call it a backdrop, but it was, yeah. Alter a colourful they, they achieved... alternative to the brooms. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is and what it... India is, full of contrasts. Yes, you, know, you have the beautiful birds and the really dusty streets and the noisy traffic and everything, so it, was, it worked. Good, good, good. And so how long ago was that, <laughs> roughly? Uh, um, well, I think I was 30 when I finished. So I am now 58. So you all know how old I am. So yeah, it was 20, <laughs> it was over 25 years ago. It's a long time ago. And there weren't very many people doing mosaic then actually. So I got a book, an Elaine Goodwin book, I think it was, uh, how to oh, yeah. do it. And that's how I started. Mm -hmm. And then I started teaching it. Um, and the, yeah, so and I'm still doing it. Right. However many years later. And, and mosaics <laughs> are now the majority of your practice, aren't they? Is that fair to say? It probably is, and it's probably what I'm known for. Um, mm -hmm. I quite like doing, still quite like doing 3D work, so I've made quite a few um, sculptures and then used mosaic as my kind of skin, my colour skin to them. So I'm still sort of combining different mediums. Um, in particular, I've done sort of wild animals, tigers and monkeys and things like that. And so... your amazing head, the head on the shoulder, <laughs> uh, head on the hand, sorry. Yes, I mean, that. that is, yeah. if I remember correctly, that's got a head... You used a lamp as, as your armature. Yeah, well, I collect all sorts of things. I mean, I've got a whole trunk of um, bits of metal that I've collected from when the mills get um, demolished around here. There's always piles of metal. And so, and I've got a welding machine. Um, oh, but for oh. that, yes, I just used a lamp. I just, I've got other lamps here. I've got all the bits and pieces sitting around. So anything that I feel like, and it's especially good to um, have a project that you're just doing for yourself for fun. And mm. that's... Um, that's the kind of thing I start off when I'm I'm just working um, to please myself, really. And then it may end up in some exhibition or for some purpose. But, uh, right. Yeah. 
<laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your uh, your studio space. So where are you located and and what kind of space is it? Are you in a shared space? Are you on your own? How big is it? Or just tell me all about it. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm based in Selkirk in the Scottish Borders, and and I'm in an old mill. I mentioned we had this is um, an old um, textile um, oh. area, so it's full of lots of old mills. So I'm in an old mill. It's got these pointy ceilings, uh, light coming through one side, and um, it's kind of semi open plan. We all have, I'm share it with a few other artists in this big building, mm -hmm. um, but we all have our own individual spaces as well. Um, but they're not like they don't have doors and locks i've just got curtains and shelves and things up it's kind of like a den really uh -huh. um and there's loads of outdoors the space outside my studio so there's a massive table just outside my studio which i'm doing a two meter diameter uh community project mosaic on it at the moment so that's wow. brilliant yeah um so the, the it, table is big enough to hold the whole mosaic uh -huh. it is oh, yeah. great so do you one of my <laughs> Sorry, go on. All right. Do you teach there as well then, using that space? Uh, I have done. Um, I used to more often, there's an, a, a space that we had called a gallery space, and I would more often get um, smaller tables out and have them dotted um, around the gallery space to do sort of long courses. But when we do open days, I would have just put all the materials in the middle of the table and provide some old tiles and some adhesive and people from like two year olds to a hundred year olds would just go and like make stuff. So that's what I'd use the table for then. Mm -hmm. I haven't really done a lot of workshops in my studio since COVID. Um, right. And in many ways I prefer to do them elsewhere, even though it's a hassle taking my stuff elsewhere. It's kind of preferable. Right, why, why do you prefer that? <laughs> I would prefer, uh, I'd love to have a space that I could teach physically in it without having to haul my stuff about. Yeah, uh, I kind of like the fact it's self-contained, so I just go and I do it and I come away. Mm. Um, this space is quite personal and private and not open to the public, and there's other artists I don't want to disturb. No. Um, I have to rearrange the space. Um, I end up giving away far too many of my materials I shouldn't give away um, when <laughs> I'm here because they just have access to everything. <laughs> so I'm sort of more planned when I go elsewhere and then I no, that makes kind sense. Of more self-contained really. And I like the fact that other places usually advertise for me. If I'm doing it all myself, I have to do that side and I'm not very good at the marketing side at all. No, so you've been there <laughs> quite a while then in Selkirk in your studio. Yes, um, as long as, yeah, I've been here 20 in the studio, about 20 years. Oh, wow, so. that is a long time. Yeah. And so yeah. obviously you must quite like the space. Yeah. And what, what, just, what is, it? Is, is it? Is it light? Is it big? Is it, is, it, is it the community? What is it about the space that you like? Um, I like the community. I've got a, quite a range of um, characters working here and we help each other. So if I need somebody to give me a hand lifting something or somebody will be able to advise me, like we've got somebody who makes frames, so she frames things for me and she can advise me on like, oh, I've got a knot in that wood, what do I do? What do I put on it to stop it doing this, that and the other? And meanwhile, I've she's found bits of China pottery in a field behind a house. So I've given her, lent her my mosaic materials, <laughs> you know, tools and things. So it's yeah. nice just having a little bit of contact. We're never on top of each other and it's quite big and there's only a few of us here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just down the road. I walk along the river to get here. Oh, that's um, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. like the feel of it, but there are downsides, that's for sure. If Which you want to hear about what? those. <laughs> Which, tell me now. I'd love to hear. Uh, well, it leaks a lot. Oh, that's <laughs> These, a big downside. Uh, yeah, it is. These ceilings are, are terrible because they're like shaped like a V. Mm -hmm. and the water goes in the middle and the pipes aren't big enough to take all the water. So in the summer, when we get these really, really flash rainstorms, the studio is just flooded on mm -hmm. the floor. And so everything has to be raised up. Um, <laughs> the heating is really inefficient, expensive. It's big um, gas heaters. And like, I'm the only person in my studio at the moment and I put the heater on just for me. And it's right. like not even warm now. Um, so it's terribly inefficient cost, costly wise. Um, so I don't like that. And then because of these problems, um, we're not secure. They keep saying, we're going to find another building. We're going to move you. And if they do that, I don't know if it's not going to be in Selkirk and they'll put our rents up and things like that. So it's not, we don't actually have security tenure at the moment. So those are downsides. No, it's, always, it's always precarious if you don't have your own space. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're sort of in the same situation. And what about the actual space that you work in rather than the general space? What, what? Yeah. What 
what do you have in it? I mean, what what can you kind of describe it for us? Obviously, we can see a mosaic behind us and a portrait yeah. on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I have lots of mosaic materials in various kind of containers of shelves. I have quite a lot of tables because at one point I was just running before COVID. I was running small workshops in my studio with just like four people, and it was a kind of like you make things um, and you pr you come back week after week and you progress on whatever you're making. So it wasn't like right. a, a big workshop and you've got to get your thing done in one day. Uh -huh. So that worked quite well because I didn't have to rearrange everything. Um, so I've got these tables, which I've still got here. I've got a printing press because I do printing. I've got a kind of experimental wow. sculpture that I'm working on with my sister, which is she makes glass work and I've got a kind of piece of glass and then it's contained in some cement at the moment which every time I have a bit of extra cement I just add a bit to it so that's a useful thing I think to have something else you're on the go yeah, I have definitely. cardboard paintings that I'm working on I have a portrait I'm working on for a wedding I have odd bits and pieces of stuff up. so you, I mean, you, work, I, you, you yeah. work on most sounds like you work on multiple projects at the same time Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's always going to be a time when you can't, like your materials haven't arrived, your tiles have run out of colour and your tiles haven't arrived, or you're not sure what you've got to do, or you're tired or yeah. whatever. Um, and the other kinds of materials that I use, like I've got a troll made out of papier-mâché at the moment, and I've been building it up over months. So it's really handy to have some, you know, each layer of papier-mâché has been drying slowly and now it's just painted in oil paint and the oil paint will also take time to dry so obviously I need to have something else to work on while these processes are happening and it's also just the way I work my head is like flitty. And what, what, and what, and what about your um uh, your current projects what are you working on now? Um, mosaic wise obviously. Yeah mosaic wise yeah. well as I mentioned this um, big community project um, that's um on the table outside it's a two meter diameter floor mosaic um, and it's going into a housing association development outside in the actual pavement area mm -hmm. um and, and how, how are you making that well i'm making it in reverse on brown paper with thanks to helen miles's advice <laughs> and i'm just hoping all the pieces are not going to fall off when i turn it over um have you cut so it in, yes. yeah no, yeah it's in lots, yeah. lots of sections um okay. Yeah, and I'm going to the school tomorrow to work on a section. So I'm working with the local primary school and each class has got like a part of it that there was that they um, did drawings for and I made a design based on their drawings. And then oh. tomorrow I go in and that particular um, class will help actually stick pieces down. So I've got children from the nursery up until like the eldest um, children in the primary school and that's um, their pieces will stick will remain they will become part of the actual wow. mosaic <laughs> so... that's fantastic that you've got yeah. nursery school children doing it <laughs> <laughs> that must be quite hard to manage I'd imagine well it's the nursery tomorrow um, the teachers are going to um, be with them and I think the children will get to just lay one or two tiles or whole tiles I've got I asked them to do pictures of the sun um, it's based on the theme of Thomas the Rhymer. It's an old um, story um, that originates from the area where this mosaic is going to go. Mm. Um, and I've asked the children to do different elements. So the very littlest ones are doing the sun. And strangely enough, they actually all produced um, things that look like mosaics because the teachers gave them little cubes of different colored paper that they stuck onto a oh, circle. So, so it is actually you're sort of halfway there. <laughs> Almost, yes. Yeah. But um, but Marion, who's been helping me, persuaded me that I can't just reproduce their design. I have to make it look like a... I hope she's going to be cross with me for saying this. I have to make it look like a proper a proper sun so that the viewer, when they go up and look at it, they won't think, what on earth is that? So I have compromised and I've got a right. sort of sun shape. <laughs> so right. I'm working on... That and probably also is quite sun. helpful, I'd imagine, to have something that's the shape of a sun. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's the shape of a, I mean, the circle is a sun shape, but there's already a circle. So I've made it kind of slightly like it's got rays coming out. Right. And I haven't quite decided. I still might put the blocks um, inside the circle and, of different colours and that the children can put in. The problem is that it's it's looking a bit more abstract, whereas all the other circles are very figurative. So um, right. even though it's what the children did, you know, it's what they produced and what I'm being inspired by, I have to think about the overall design and not confuse the viewer too much. Yeah, so. and then and those children <laughs> will grow up and want to show their children their yeah. wonderful contribution to the 
with local communities. So. <laughs> and they won't want to say, I don't know why it looks like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. um, and do you have other, th other things that you're uh, after that lined up? Yes, well, with this same project, I've got another mosaic to do. It's around a tree, um, the Housing Association association is called Eildon Housing Association and um, it's the Eildon tree which is actually I think the hawthorn tree that Thomas the Rhymer actually sat under when the Queen of Elfland came and um, seduced him and took him to Elfland. Anyway it's a very interesting story I would look it up um, <laughs> if you're interested. So anyway I've got another there's a tree being built uh, the no, tree's not being built the tree hopefully has been planted um, and I'm doing a mosaic around it so that's for the same right. project. Right. Then I've got um, Abundant Borders is another, um, it's a community gardening project. They have areas of land where they grow food and they have volunteers. So um, some of the food goes will go to the food banks, um, but it's also enabling volunteers to just be outside and garden and have an orchard and things that you couldn't necessarily have in your own garden and learn skills. And um, so there's two um, gardens that want um, mosaic, They've managed to get a little bit of money to um, make their gardens look beautiful as well. So they've one of them has asked me to do a. Um, they're both community projects again. So I'm both working. The um, people will actually be making the mosaics. One is as as a meter diameter round mosaic that's going to go in the middle of a gazebo, and it's going mm -hmm. to have um, herbs and uh, seasons and a compass and things like that in it. And then the other one is just using recycled materials of which I have hundreds of collect my, my studios like stacked full of tiles. And we're just going to have a bit of fence, you know, they have, they have strips. Yeah. I'm going to put some weedy board inside the strips and then I'm going to use it as four seasons and just use recycled materials and not worry about too much about them lasting. Right. Um, so that's two projects. That sounds, uh, fun. that sounds really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I have other things on the horizon, as you know, you probably have to do so much work before you actually ever get a project off the yeah, ground and yeah. before you actually ever see a penny. So there are other things that I'm still I'm busy doing, but I don't know whether they'll come to fruition. Right. Well, that sounds good. Um, so um, can we just slightly retract a little bit and talk about your your previous work? What What do you consider your best work and what do you... What do you want to do more of? Yeah, it's a difficult question, really. I don't really know what my best work is, but the things that come to mind are two particular projects I did. One was um, Our Lady Crowned for St. Catherine Liburi Catholic Church in Glasgow. That was the first time I used Smolty, and it's a six-foot mosaic of Mary and... Um, um, when the when when it was installed and the priest looked at it, it brought a tear to his eye. So there's oh, something very magical oh. about doing something in a space like mm. that. Um, quite um, uh, humbling, I suppose, in a way. Um, so mm. that that comes to my mind. And then the other thing um, that has hold always holds interest for me is um, the portrait of William, the coal miner, mm. Um, mm. for the ruins project in Pennsylvania in the United States um yes because that was yes. about that was Sorry. about a particular person and i learned about his family and there's the whole environment um and the history of the coal miners um and the fact he's still got descendants there so i think it was um the personal contact of the person and the and the um you know it just seemed to have a real connection and a real location and a real purpose um so that is something i was very pleased to do but really, my 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 best work is hopefully the work to come. You know, I'm always thinking about what next, what I'm going to do next. So. Right, right. Now, I would encourage anyone to go look up Rachel's William at, at the ruins um, in Pennsylvania. It's, it, it's an amazing mosaic and it is an amazing story as well. Mm -hmm. And the photographs of of William's relatives with the mosaic, it's it's mm -hmm. very powerful, I think. Yeah. yeah. What about the most unusual material or tools that you use in your practice? Well, I do have one thing, um, and I'm renowned for um, using this, which is a fish knife. It's a silver fish knife. It started off that my husband had an old collection that we never used. Um, so I brought them down to the studio and they're just really, really good for the point on the end is really good for moving tiles and they're really good for spreading. And the cement comes off nicely, and because they're solid silver, they last really well. Um, so that was they, they, those were my, the original ones my husband had. But since then, I've been collecting them. So actually, just recently, 
I was in a furniture store and I got a beautiful whole set of oh, wow. new ones for £7.50. So I'm renowned, if you come on my workshops, that you get to use these as my main tool. So, so the, those are your spatulas? Yeah. Wow. They're, wow. So yeah. all they get all covered in, in, in cement and tile adhesive and pigment and... Well, I clean them off and they clean up quite well. Um, and yeah, so they're pretty, they're pretty hard wearing. I mean, they do, they can get really, really covered in cement and then you might decide to say goodbye to um, a particular one, but, uh, but nobody wants to use them anymore. So the person in the oh. furniture store actually said, she said um, I could get a fortune if I went to an antiques dealer for just one of these, but nobody actually wants to buy them anymore. So oh. the... So they're available. So I recommend if you're in a, um, you know, a charity shop or a secondhand shop, um, look out for them and give one a try because they work very well. I, I love the point. That's very yeah, attractive yeah. feature of it. Yeah, because I yeah. use normal kitchen, again, yeah, normal domestic knives, which right. are charity shops, but they have, they've obviously got the rounded end. Yeah. Which is not no, as good as that is... lovely. Yes. Yeah. So it sort of combines as a pick and... Yeah. Uh, Bachelor. Yeah, you can oh. spread. I mix, I spread, I move things around, dig things under, um, you know, to get a tile off. They feel nice on the hand. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite strong. Um, yeah. These are a bit these are a bit smaller than the ones that um I was using, so I haven't actually used these ones yet. But uh, they should be okay, I think. And my spatulas just get covered in paint, oil paint, and they're no good. So. <laughs> I think that's a really helpful tip. Thank you. I've got some nice cat eyes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they were fox eyes, not cat eyes. Got to oh, get my sister made by your sister. Cat. Yeah. Oh. So when I do the animals, she always makes me these really lovely eyes. Gosh, they're great. Wow. The anyway. No, 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 they put it in the yeah, middle. Oh, yeah. it now. oh, and that's got the real kind of in it, you know, you can it's very 3D, isn't it? Yeah, it is 3D. Mm. I have tried making um, you know, eyes with out of mosaic, but when it's like a sculptural thing and it's outside, it's better to have something that's a bit bolder, I think. Full of full it's of all right. character and yeah, that's, that's right. It does. It makes them, yeah. it makes them look a bit cute, actually, which is it depends what you want, really. If you want a cute, a cute tiger, or if you want a fierce one. <laughs> anyway, yes, maybe you want a bit of both. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um. So let's just wind up by. Um. I just want to find out how people reach you, how they learn about you, um, what social media are you on. So if they want to know more about you and your work, where do they go? I have a website. It's uh, www.joyparker.org. Um, I'm on Instagram, and it's at Joy AI Parker. And I'm on. I've got a Facebook art page, and that's uh, facebookcom stroke page. But I think if you look up Joy Parker Mosaic Selkirk, you'll find me. Okay. Somewhere. Well, I'll, I'll link those, all those <laughs> details in the description below um okay well joy thank you very very much for allowing us inside your studio <laughs> and... you're very welcome nice to talk to you <laughs> very nice to talk to you too yeah Bye. and i look forward to uh, the rest of your um your interviewees hearing them hearing what they have to say yes well me too yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> bye bye